Hello everyone, my name is Lian Tao from Peking University. I'm glad to introduce our work on clinical health status representation learning. This research is carried out by Peking University and Peking University Third Hospital. This oral presentation consists of five parts, the background about COVID-19, the loss of stay prediction problem, our proposed solution, data size, and experiment. Finally, our AI doctor interaction system. Since January 2020, the whole world has been facing a pandemic brought by COVID-19. Many patients suffer from life-threatening systematic problems and need to be carefully monitored in ICU. The growth of patients has brought massive pressure on health systems, overwhelming the National Health Service and exhausting the intensive care units. Research suggests a critically ill patient is nearly twice as likely to die when the ICU is operating at more than 75% capacity. It is crucially essential to perform a dynamic patient health risk prediction for the individual patient to enable an early medical intervention and optimize resource scheduling. Normally, vital signs, demographic information, lab tests such as blood alkaline and blood glucose are recorded through the treatment in SU and taken as input. Electronic medical records can be seen as a type of multivariate time series data and provide essential healthcare information for the data-driven healthcare prediction. However, it is difficult for human physicians to evaluate patients' health risk and accurately identify the critical factors, especially when the clinical resources are insufficient in developing countries. Human physicians are lack of knowledge and experience of the disease. They may omit many signs and miss the chance of early intervention. The prognosis performed by human physicians may not meet huge demand, while clinical experience accumulation is time-consuming and challenging in the early outbreak. As a result, intelligent prognosis is in urgent need against the emerging epidemic. It not only assists physicians to perform early diagnosis, select personalized treatments and prevent adverse outcomes, but also optimizes the allocation of medical resources and reduces the medical cost. Next, we need to formulate the prediction task. A straightweight label is using the final clinical outcome as a measure of health status at each record. Suppose that their patient A and patient B were admitted to the hospital at February 1st with similar health status. Patient A unfortunately died at March 6th. Patient B survived and discharged at the same day. For the medical records of these two patients, such a hard label cannot represent the health status of each record reasonably. Consider that for patients being discharged in a few days, their health status should be much better than other patients, especially those who will die in several days. As a result, we decide to take the remaining time spent in ICU as a health risk score, combine survived and mortality patients in a unified living manner to assess their health risks. According to the statistics data of Tongji Hospital in China, and HM hospitals in Spain. Most patients with COVID-19 in ICU have been discharged or died within 35 days. As a result, we simulate the health status using the loss of stay for survived patients and we use 17 minus remaining time spent in ICU for mortality patients. This is a risk score between 0 and 70 for all patients. Suppose that patient A will die after 10 days, then the label is set to 60, a high-risk score. Patient B will discharge after 10 days in ICU, then the label is set to 10, which is a low-risk score. Patients with high-risk scores are facing a high probability of adverse outcomes and need emergency treatment. But how to perform this prediction task? 
due to the remarkable representational learning ability of neural networks. Many deep learning based models have been developed to tackle such tasks by using medical records. Usually, similar to the natural language processing, those models first embed medical records into low dimensional hidden space based on recurrent neural networks to learn the dense representation of the patient's health status. Deep learning models require a large amount of data for training. However, in the early stage of the epidemic, there are only very limited medical data available for study. This may be because the precise diagnostic has not been established. For example, by January 2, 2020, only 41 admitted hospital patients had been identified as having COVID-19 infection, which means that the meaningful data to study COVID-19 are highly insufficient. We tried to use the existing time series EMR dataset via transfer learning to learn the general knowledge of clinical feature embedding. Our proposed model leverages existing resources to improve health representation learning. However, feature size and prediction labels really vary among target domain and available resources. Therefore, for the prognosis with limited data, such a research challenge remains. How to make full use of the existing resources to learn the robust health embedding via transfer learning? Different from sequential embedding through time step like natural language processing, we build a multi channel feature embedding layer to embed the features separately and prepare for the transfer learning. We will conduct feature specific transfer learning since this layer mainly captures the general pattern of medical features. The self-attention mechanism is utilized to obtain information from the health context and capture correlations between medical features. It reencodes each feature by looking at other features for clues that can help lead a better understanding of the given feature. The re-encoded embedding of features are in the same hidden space. Embeddings of all features are integrated into an overall representation of the patient and finally used to predict the loss of stay. Our proposed model not only transfer embedding parameters between for shared features, but also distills knowledge from private features in the source domain. We build two pre-trained models on source dataset, one teacher model with all features and one student model with only shared features to be transferred. The student model is trained to imitate the teacher model's embedding behavior via similarity supervision. Concretely, the teacher model is trained on the source dataset with both shared features and private features. Then, we distill the teacher model's knowledge to guide the training of student model via embedding similarity loss. The potential mistakes learned by the teacher may negatively affect the student. As a result, we also train the student model to produce the correct ground truth label in addition to similarity supervision from the teacher. Finally, the pre-trained parameters on student model are transferred to the targeted set and further fine-tuned. We take two COVID-19 SU data sets as a targeted data size and perform the loss of stay prediction. One is released by Tongji Hospital in China with 375 patients, 18 features shared with source. The other one is released by HM Hospitals in Spain with 1,800 patients, 19 features shared with source. To further verify the scalability of our model when performing different clinical prediction tasks on different data sites, we also conduct an additional mortality prediction experiment on end stage renal disease patient. We take the physionite cardiology data site as a source and pre chain the medical feature embedding based on the sepsis prediction. This data site is sourced from SU patients in several U.S. hospital systems. Experiment results show that our proposed model outperforms all baseline models on different data sites 
all evaluation metrics. Medical experts need to understand how a certain decision is made by a deep learning model to a particular patient, so that the prediction results are trustworthy for developing individualized intervention and extracting medical knowledge. In order to intuitively show the implication and the prediction process, we develop a visualization system. The horizontal axis denotes the visiting time, the vertical axis denotes the prediction result of health risk. When putting the mouse on a single point, the record information at that time will be presented. Then we click the corresponding key features. The value and the importance of weight are enrolled in detail here. This anonymous case patient is a 64-year-old male. The treatment procedure lasts 24 days with a total of 35 records. Finally, he died unfortunately. Actually, the patient's condition is predicted to be deteriorating rapidly, along with the variation of some biomarkers. The results remind doctors that they should put an eye on these features and take some treatment to the patient to prevent or delay the adverse outcomes. The patient's health risk leaps from 30 to 60. The ground truth label shows that the patient dies unfortunately in 15 days. Another case patient is a 73-year-old male. The treatment lasts 18 days with a total of 24 records. According to the non state evaluation results, the patient's health status has been recovering stably. Finally, he survived and was discharged from ICU. Please feel free to scan the QR code to try the visualization prototype system. But this system is still being improved, so the prediction results may change. Thanks for your attention.